A lot of you guys have been really curious about the R6's capabilities of shooting sports and we've just been to Italy for a week shooting a lot of content in the figure skating world. So this was the perfect opportunity to test the R6 in a really challenging environment for basically any camera out there. And this week I have been shooting thousands of pictures of figure skatings during practice, test runs, but also in a setup shoot which was really low light so I had to crank up the ISO all the way up to 25,600. So in this video I will give you my experiences, show you a lot of pictures and tell you what I think about the R6 in the world of figure skating or sports in general. So more after the intro. <laughs> tiny bit about me and my photography background. I used to be a press photographer shooting decent amount of sports back in the day but I haven't really done so in a while. But when I was doing so for most of my professional career I was a 1DX shooter. Starting with the 1DX3, the 1DX S2 all the way up to the 1DX Mark III. So I have a fair grasp of all kinds of different cameras from Sony as well as from Canon when it comes to sports photography. So now that we own the R6 I really want to know if the R6 for its mere price of $2,500 can keep up with a monster that has been established in the sports photography world for decades like the 1DX Mark III for example. And since I will be testing this camera in the video department as well as on the portrait side as well make sure to also follow me on Instagram to see more behind the scenes and more content uploaded on my Instagram account as well. When I started shooting figure skaters a couple years ago I thought that this was probably a really easy environment for my camera to be in. But I was pretty wrong because the background is really busy with all the advertisements going on. It's also really harsh in contrast when it comes to all the white of the ice and those skaters are actually quite fast and they're moving all the way from the outer skirts of the ice rink all the way really close up to you. So the autofocus tracking really needs to do a great job if you want to get some decent pictures in. And although it really looks bright most of these ice rings are really not that well lit so you need to crank up your ISO as well. Before I was using my Eurus R and oftentimes I had a lot of missed shots especially when they were doing their spins or jumps and the camera just couldn't keep up neither with the speed nor with the autofocus capabilities. So I was a little bit frustrated from time to time but now with the R6 all of this changed drastically. One of the most important things when it comes to sports photography is the autofocus capabilities so let's start about those first. And to say the least I was pleasantly surprised about the autofocus capabilities of the R6. With previous cameras I was basically just putting the focus field in the middle and let the camera do its thing and hoping for the best. But with the Eros R6 I put it into face detection mode and I was really surprised that the camera hit its target 99% of the times. It kept an amazing track with the face or even the eye. And what surprised me even more is that even when the skater had their backs turned towards me it still found the face or rather the head and that is something that I haven't seen on any other camera before. So even when they were doing their spins or just skating backwards it still kept the focus on the skater's head and that was something that I was really surprised about. Even when the skaters were moving really fast the camera had no problem of keeping track of them even with a busy background or spotlights in the back, them doing jumps or spins, the camera hit its target about 99% of the time and I haven't seen that kind of results from any other camera before. When shooting in absolute low light with a really high ISO value the camera lost its touch a little when it comes to the autofocus capabilities but it was still pleasantly surprised and it hit its target most of the times and for that kind of low light contrasty situation I was still really surprised and I still give a thumbs up to the autofocus capabilities of the R6. The next thing that is obviously really appealing for sports photographers out there is the 20 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. It shoots 12 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode and sometimes I actually had to go down to the 12 frames per second because 20 frames per second is a lot. And I ended up shooting thousands of pictures over the course of 3 days because the 20 frames per second really makes you trigger happy. 
So I ended up switching between the 20 frames as well as the 12 frames a lot. And I personally couldn't tell a difference, neither in any kind of side effects of flickering or banding or of the overall quality of the images. So I think just shoot away if you need the 20 frames per second. In my kind of scenarios, I really didn't see any side effects. So that is something that I would recommend for when you need the speed. And 20 frames per second really is a lot. And that kind of blurs the line between looking at a real video and just a bunch of pictures stitched together. And speaking of which, you can actually use some cool effects with the 20 frames per second by just stitching them together, looping them, making a boomerang out of them and just uploading it to social media. And I think that effect kind of gives it a cool vibe and is really trendy right now. So I love having these 20 frames per second. And obviously with 20 frames per second, you won't miss anything. It doesn't matter how fast your subject is moving, you'll get all the shots you need, even the ones they don't want you to see. The one thing I was a little bit worried about having such high frame rates was that I'm only recording two SD cards and I don't have the option of a CFast or a CF Express card. But like I already said, I was pretty trigger happy and I was shooting a lot of continuous shots in 20 frames per second and I didn't have the buffer run out on me even once. So that is definitely not a concern for me when using V90 cards. And the ones that I use from Angelbird actually had absolutely no problems. So keep that in mind when you want want to shoot 20 frames per second, get a fast SD card, but if you do, you won't have any problems with any buffering. Obviously another concern of a lot of sports photographers out there is the high ISO capabilities. Because when you want to freeze the action of something moving really fast, you need a really fast shutter. And for most of these shots I used to shutter around 1000th of a second, so I had to crank up the ISO a little bit. And I didn't see any noise and the image was really clean and I was really satisfied with the low light capabilities of the EOS R6. And like I already mentioned, I filmed an extreme low light when Bell was filming the promo shoot and I had to crank up the ISO all the way up to 25,600 and lowering my shutter to 1 250th of a second. And yes, of course, there's noise in this image, but I was actually surprised about A, how little noise it is and B, how clean of a noise pattern it has. Because there wasn't any of this ugly color noise that you see on a lot of other shots and it kind of felt a little bit like film grain, which is something I think that looks really pleasing to the eye and something I even add to some of my pictures and posts just because I like the look of it. So yes, of course there was some noise in it when shooting at such high ISO, but with a little bit of noise reduction in posts, those shots are totally usable and that is something that makes for a great sports photography camera if you don't have to worry about your high ISO shots not being usable. As I've already mentioned in the beginning, I was a 1DX shooter for most of my career and I was really surprised about how light the combo of the EOS R6 with the RF 70-200 was. And I really wasn't used to that because I was used to having a really big 1DX body as well as the EF 70-200. And that combo of the EOS R6 with the 70-200 was so much lighter and I probably could have shot for hours without getting tired. So if this was a concern of yours before, it definitely isn't anymore because that combo is really light. Another thing that's worth mentioning is the battery life. And I already said that I shot thousands of pictures and I probably shot about a thousand pictures each session and each session was about one or two hours. And I really didn't have any problems with the battery life. And after each session, I had almost half the battery life left. So yes, the battery is small, but for me, the battery life is totally acceptable and great. And with two or three batteries, you can probably shoot all day and shoot thousands of pictures if you wanted to. One of the most important things of all of this is obviously the image quality. And what can I say? All of my pictures were tech sharp and I really got some gorgeous pictures out of this. So when it comes to the image quality side, I really couldn't complain as I couldn't on any other Canon camera before. And last not but least, let's address the one thing that a lot of people are worried about and that is the megapixel count. Because sometimes in sports photography you can't really get close enough so you need to crop in. And most of our pictures end up on social media. But like I already said way in the beginning, I was a press and sports photographer way back in my career beginning about 10 to 15 years ago. And most of my content I shot on the 1D Mark III and that camera only has 10 megapixels. 
and I had clients of mine actually post all these pictures and printed them on billboards and in brochures and use them for the advertisement. So the 20 megapixels really is no problem. And even looking at it on my 32 inch 4K monitor, cropping into the image, you still get so much detail, even when zooming into 200 to 300%. So 20 megapixels on a sensor like the one on the EOS R6 is plenty enough in 2020 for you not to worry about needing more megapixels when shooting sports. Especially a lot of these sports shots are of one, two or three subjects. So you don't really need that much detail level that you would need when, for example, shooting landscapes. So the 20 megapixels is plenty enough, especially when you want to separate your subject from the background. You really don't need that high of a megapixel count. So please don't worry about the camera only having 20 megapixels because for sports photography and probably for portrait photography and most other photography genres as well, this is plenty enough. So what's my overall verdict for the EOS R6 for sports photography? And you can probably guess it by now because I've been praising this camera for the past couple of minutes. And I think that this camera is amazing for sports photography. And I've also shot on the 1DX Mark III and I would take the R6 over the 1DX Mark III for sports photography for its more modern technology. It's amazing autofocus when it comes to face detection and eye autofocus that you can utilize in the EVF as well as on the back screen. So this modern technology is something that makes me want to use the R6 more than the older technology in a 1DX Mark III, for example. So there you have it. I hope you liked this little review of the EOS R6 when it comes to sports photography and my experiences shooting figure skaters on the ice. And if you're interested in more content on the EOS R6, especially when it comes to figure skating, make sure to follow Belle on Instagram on at monkeypixelskates because it's her camera and she will be using it for the majority of the time shooting all of her content video as well as photography. And she's been uploading this to her Instagram. So check this one out as well. But but if you want to see more content about cameras, tutorials, tricks, tips, the industry and everything about the EOS R6, R5 and so on, then make sure to hit the subscribe button on this channel and like this video because it helps the channel grow and I hope to see you on the next one.